to sleep with her and she could conceive Ishmael. Mm -hmm. But here, she was, at that time, was no longer a concubine. The scripture said that Sarah gave her up to be his wife. Mm -hmm. So what did that do? That put Ishmael in line for some inheritance. Okay, so let's, okay. But in Genesis 17, 1, and I'll go there myself, and we're going to camp out a little bit there uh, more than anything else with the time left. And uh, I got my notes, so you can always come back there another day. And, uh, 17, 1. We serve an awesome God, church. Yes, amen. amen. And you know what? He doesn't forget nothing. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me. Mm. Faithfully and be blameless. Amen. That's what we're talking about tonight, church. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will be greatly increase. I will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant. You see, he didn't make covenant with Ishmael. The angel came to Hagar and told her, why are you distressed? Why are you sad and all that? He goes, well, I'll, I'll make him uh, uh, a great nation. And I'll give you sons. I think he even had 12 sons. Uh -huh. And I did a little background quick study on that. And you know, the, tw the 12 sons of Ishmael are cities that are scattered throughout the Middle East. To this day. The Arabs, yeah. The Arabs, the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole teaching. The restless around. people. Yeah. They're still God's people. Mm -hmm. God loves them, but but they're doing it outside of Jesus. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And I was driving to church, and I was saying, the Lord reminded me of that. Because the, the seed came through it. Right, right. Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. Preach it. He's the one that he made covenant. Uh -huh. He says, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. And I put down here the United States. <laughs> I don't care if it was 6,000 years later. <laughs> We're a nation Amen. under God. Amen. I don't care what the Democratic left, That's right. the Democrats, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I don't care what the left is trying to tell us. Right. We're a nation, yeah. one nation yeah. under God. Amen. Amen. Wow. With liberties. Uh -huh. And you know what? There's justice for all. That's right. And that justice yeah. is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No longer will, will you be called Abram, but your name will now be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and and you and your descend, descendants after you for the generations to come. Amen. I'm a yeah. generation to come. That's right. Yeah. That yeah. covenant cannot be broken. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That covenant cannot be broken. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, the angel, and I'm not discrediting or dishonoring the angel, but the angel was telling him, yeah, well, you know, yeah, you know, you're going to have nations. You know, you know, but it wasn't powerful. Right. This yeah. was out of the nostrils and mouth of God. Yeah. <laughs> To be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan where you now reside as foreigner, I will give you as everlasting possession to you and your descendants Amen. after you. And I will be their God. Amen. I got Jehovah, Jireh, as my God. That's right. He's my provider. Amen. 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 Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant. Amen. So there's a condition. You and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you and the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to go under circumcision and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. Let me pause here. I'm going to put my finger right here. 
They had no sexual identity crisis at this time. No. <laughs> let me be very <laughs> frank. You either had something to circumcise or you didn't. Right. If you didn't have anything to circumcise, you were a female. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you had something to circumcise, you were a male. <laughs> they didn't open up the doors. They said, well, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm going to let my child think of what they, they are. <laughs> Wasn't any of that garbage going on. Yeah. This is the 21st century. We're walking in a time of evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I was raised, I mean, I've got this, this thing that needs circumcision. So I think I'm a guy. But I feel like a girl. Or vice versa. It wasn't any of that church. I'm not trying to be but no, you see you, where real. we have allowed ourselves to get right. to? Yeah. Right. You either were circumcised or you weren't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days or older must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought for money by a foreigner. Mm. So that's kind of odd. But <coughs> what, what we want to do I've had a chance to tell this to somebody that was living a, the wrong lifestyle. Oh, they were gay. Okay. They were gay. Well, I was born a girl, but I, I feel like a guy. Uh. Okay. And it could be the other way around. Yeah, yeah. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. If you think there was a mistake, if you think God made a mistake, <laughs> then let his the blood of the Son Jesus Christ yeah. circumcise your heart. Because uh -huh. that's where circumcision is made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the circumcision of the heart. Mm -hmm. Let him change the heart. Let him do spiritual operation on the heart. Yeah. And after that come on now. After that operation is done, you're gonna know. Yeah. Right. Amen. You're gonna get circumcised. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Am I not? It's a no brainer. Uh -huh. But see, when you're fighting perverted sin, right. and I'm not just talking about that, I'm just talking about any sin that wants, us in, that wants to keep us in bondage. Mm -hmm. if, you keep, if you keep feeding it, yeah. if you keep hanging out with people that are doing what you're doing, it's going to take a while to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in bondage. People are saying, well, how do I get out of a hole? Stop digging! <laughs> Right, Tony? Drop the you want to get out of a hole, pull the shovel down, down the back shovel away from the shovel. Stop digging. Mm. Mm. You'll find a way to get out. Mm. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Okay. I won't go through, the, through all the other examples in the Old Testament, but. But, but you know of them, because I mentioned them about Jacob and Esau, uh, Solomon, David, King David giving the, the throne to Solomon rather than the other son. But one scripture that came across to me when I was doing the study was um, the prodigal son. He too got his inheritance. And he was the youngest. He wasn't even the old. He was the youngest. But he wanted to go out into the world. He wanted to taste the world. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go out and do his thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he told his father. The father didn't have to give it to him because actually the inheritance was promised to always first. The father loved his son so much. He didn't want to hurt him. Mm -hmm. Because I love you so much, son. I'm going to give you your inheritance. But I beg you, don't go. Well, the whole story. The son went, made a mess, mm. ran through everything, came back. But love still put him in position Amen. for airship. That's right. Amen. 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 Love is in the air. That's in Luke 15. 12, if you're taking notes, read it. It's a powerful, it's a po it's a powerful Father's Day story. Yes. Amen. So 
So we're learning tonight that we as believers are co-heirs with Christ. We as believers have been given the privilege, and it's a privilege, church. It's a privilege in this day and age, in this time that we're living, that we can be those that are of us that have chosen to straighten out our lives, to live a good life, That's right. to have a happy home, yeah. to have a secure marriage, to have children that love you, yeah. even though maybe they're not totally serving God the way that you would like them to, but they love you. It's good to have that. It's good to have grandchildren that love you, that want to come to church with you. It's just good in the 21st century, living in the times that we're living, to be happy, to be happy Christians. Yeah, do we, do we, do we um, get down with you know, our families and issues? I really like what you said. We can be concerned. We can be um, in a position to pray for them give to them, do whatever we have to, but that does not have to bring us down to the point where we're living discouraged lives either. Okay, so I don't want to get off the subject, but it's, it's, it's just good to be living today in the privilege of sharing Christ in his inheritance as, a, as adopted sons, Amen. sons of God. Lord. Christians are treated as firstborn heirs. And I'm going to bypass the scripture here, but it's in Hebrews 12, 23. And it's in, uh, for you to read it, but I'll read it to you. He says, to the church of the, pers per uh, of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. Amen. That's one of our inheritance in this church. It's not the only one, but it's one. Mm -hmm. our, our names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. The scripture shares with us, no one can take that away from you. Right. The enemy may lie to you. Oh man, he just did that again. He just prayed about that yesterday. And look at your back, you know, up to your knee, up to your eyeball. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have time to share about grace, but I've also learned something about about grace that, for me, brings a balance because many churches, many pastors, and I thought the same way. People are kicking around grace because they can just live the way they want mm -hmm. and they're not accountable to anybody. Just wait a minute. Listen. Grace and mercy. Then why does the scripture say mercy is meaningless anymore? Because we need a church. Because I don't care how good we think we are, how big of that bag of chip we think we are. <laughs> I'm going to go home tonight and I'm going to probably make a mess of things by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I need his grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Do I take advantage of it? No. Well, no. God will judge me on that. Right. I don't need my pastors to judge me on that, or I don't need a denomination to judge me on that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, if I'm truly walking with the Lord, right. I'm going to let God judge me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to take advantage yeah. of that. Yeah. But I'm so glad that I do have grace. Because right. yeah. I need it every day of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, there's going to be those that, you know, they're still living their old life, you know. But you know what? There's another thing the Lord showed me, and I'm going to pretty much close. <coughs> another thing the Lord showed me, Pastor, is that we can't close our doors That's right. to those that choose to live yeah. an alternate lifestyle. That's right. That's We're right. not praying, Lord, just bring in wholesome Christians. <laughs> Make sure right. the men wear suits, the women are in bed and in dresses. Yes, Lord. They have their hats. No. Oh, hey, right. we've had people Amen. in here, and I'm so glad that you've allowed them to come through. They're nodding out in the back because they just, they just did some dope before they came. Uh -huh. <laughs> but how else are they going to hear the word? Yes. How else are they going to hear it, church? Yes. We can't be judgmental that we close. Here we're praying for a revival, and we don't want who the revival is bringing in. That's right. We experienced Amen. that in the Jesus movement in the 60s. Mm -hmm. We used to go to a Calvary Chapel Saturday night concerts mm -hmm. where there was a revival going on with the youth. People were coming off the beach, all then all hippied out, they're all dirty. 
maybe smoked a couple doobies before they came in, <laughs> but they're Boy, there now playing their guitars. They were bringing in revival. Amen. Revival started. There was a revival going on in the Jesus movement. Because yeah. Calvary Chapel, worldwide right now, has right. over 3,300 churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God was doing something. What did the religious leaders tell Chuck Smith? Pastor Chuck, the elders and leaders want to have a meeting with you. Okay, let's have a meeting. You know, we just put new carpet in this sanctuary, and uh, now all these hippies are coming in barefoot. Dirty Levi's are sitting all over the floors. And you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you heard right from God. So you know what Chuck Smith told the head elder? Since you first recognized it, I want you to get a work party here on Saturday morning. Make sure it's early. We're going to rip all this carpet out, wow. and we're going to leave it concrete. Because if I got to wash it down Saturday night before church on Sunday, I'm not going to stop the move of God. That's right. Yeah. So we have to be ready, church. There might be bikers. There might be prostitutes. There might be dope fiends uh -huh. coming through here. Amen. And you know what? Grace has to be extended to them. Amen. Grace has to be extended, Amen. not so they can stay that way, but until they change, Amen. grace has been given to them. Amen. Amen. But we have to teach them that. Amen. You don't need to stay there because you've got something here. What's up here? An inheritance. Yes. You've got something so valuable you don't even know about it. So when you choose to get sober, really sober, when you choose to get your life right, we can work with you. Amen. We've got something to offer you. Besides even eternal life, it's eternal inheritance. And I didn't get to the uh, a couple of key spots here, but you know what? I think God fulfilled what he wanted to tonight. Amen. 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 I want to keep these notes, and we can always revisit this another time. Amen. I just hope you got a little something. Yes. It was yeah. more of an introduction, but, but I'm telling you, church, if we decide that we're going to receive an understanding inheritance, we'll be some of the first ones that want to la hop, lap, and jump and dance here on Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Pastor, that's, that's my message. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.